Hello, my lovely anatomists and physiologists, Michelle Glass here. Welcome to another chapter six video. We're looking at how hormones are important in regulating, in this case, bone growth as one item. And we'll also be looking at what's called calcium regulation just a little bit in this video, and then we'll have an entire video just to that topic. So one thing to note about your hormones is that hormones are going to be um, produced by an endocrine gland or group of cells. It's going to release the hormone which then is going to travel through the capillary or the bloodstream, we'll just say bloodstream. And so it gets to what we call the target tissue. And the target tissue is the tissue that's going to respond or make a change, be stimulated as a result of the hormone. So hormones, remember, are chemical messengers. And what I like to do is think about them as they talk to the target tissue. But the key feature of a hormone is that it travels through the bloodstream and so what this means is it can have widespread effects. And also it means that it's a, a long-term communication um, because it can sort of take a little bit longer for the signal to reach the target. And then usually it's causing the target cell to do something that can occur for a matter of hours, days, months, and so forth. And we see too that all of this is part of our endocrine system. And we do see then that the hormones are involved in regulating body systems in the same or similar way to the nervous system, but different mechanism, different mechanism of action. So the other thing to pay attention to here is when we talk about hormones, we do want to pay attention to um, who makes or releases the hormone. We want to know the name and usually the abbreviation of the hormone. We want to know both the target tissue and then also the type of response. And so I suggest as you are creating your notes that you organize yourself a table that looks like this. So we have, we have four columns. And then we're going to be looking at six hormones. So you need seven rows. And the top column or the first column, I would title hormone and then list out the hormones we'll talk about. Growth hormone, thyroxin. You can group together estrogen and testosterone. Calcitriol, which I've noted here, remember, is coming from vitamin D. Parathyroid hormone and calcitonin. And then we need a column for produced by, and we'll fill this in together. We need a column for the target cell or tissue. And notice that I've grouped together the target cell for growth hormone, thyroxin, and the estrogen testosterone would all be targeting osteoblasts. And then at the bottom, I have parathyroid hormone and calcitonin all targeting osteoclasts. So this is helping you, this table kind of helps you do comparison contrast. And then the last column should be the effect. And so take a few minutes, maybe pause your video, organize your table for your notes, if you'd like, and then let's join back together. All right, y'all, so as we talk through our hormones, it's important to note their name and abbreviation if they have one. And so growth hormone is also abbreviated as GH, and this one is going to be produced by the pituitary gland. Pituitary gland. 
here I'm glad to be typing. So I get a lot of help with my um, autocorrect. Very nice. Now we already mentioned that the growth hormone is targeting osteoblasts. And when we talk about the effects of growth hormone, we'll see that it's gonna increase chondrocyte proliferation. So that's in making more of that cartilage. Remember, this is gonna be important during the endochondral, let's make a note, endochondral. Um, let's not do endochondral ossification, but let's just put a reminder about um, elongation of the bone that epiphyseal plate. Let's do that. Increase chondrocyte proliferation at the epiphyseal plate. And then we're going to see also the increase of calcium retention. So that's, of course, going to be important in the mineralization of the bone. And then let's also put stimulates osteoblast um, activity. And that'd be important in like increasing density of the bone. So that'd be important, like increasing chondrocyte proliferation is more talking about that elongation, right? Increase elongation um, that's happening at the epiphyseal plate. But then we have that change in density throughout life. When we look at the hormone thyroxin, this is produced by the gland called the thyroid gland. We don't really have a good abbreviation for this, although um, you know, our text right now doesn't tell us about it in chapter six, but in the future, we might see these referred to as T3 or T4 um, abbreviations. So it's kind of nice to note that here. We've already mentioned here that the thyroxine is targeting osteoblasts. And then what we'll see here, it's just gonna promote osteoblast activity and the synthesis a bony matrix. Now with both growth hormone and thyroxine hormone, we'll see these having multiple effects in the body. And so what we're talking about here is limited to what it's doing for, um, for the skeleton. Okay, when we look at estrogen and testosterone, these are our sex hormones. So these are being produced by gonads. So estrogens we'll see produced by ovaries and testosterone we'll see is produced by testes. Now these are both having widespread effects in the body, right? But again, we're limiting our discussion here to what is happening with the skeletal system. And so these hormones do talk to osteoblasts. And when they do talk to osteoblasts, we see it promotes osteoblast activity and production of that bony matrix. Ultimately, it promotes <laughs> epiphyseal, whoa, bad typing, epiphyseal closure. We talked about epiphyseal closure as that time when the epiphyseal plate or cartilage gets converted to the epiphyseal line, which means bone and means it's done growing in, in length. And we'll see that the estrogen is faster than testosterone. And so this is one of the reasons we get this common difference in secondary sex characteristics between people who have estrogen and people who have testosterone. Okay, continuing to our next hormone on our list, we have calcitriol. In calcitriol, we've talked about it in a couple of different ways, actually. Um, so we'll see that this is like the hormone name for vitamin D. And the calcitriol we'll see is actually being produced at the kidney. So even though we said vitamin D is being synthesized by the integumentary system, when we looked at that in chapter five, we talked about the ultraviolet light in the um, skin is converting a steroid to cal cold calciferol, which is released into the bloodstream, makes its way to the liver, gets converted to another chemical, makes its way to the kidney, and then makes our calcitriol. So we actually consider the kidney as producing the calcitriol. And so what we'll see is the target tissue here is different. The target tissue here is, are the cells of the small intestine. And let's just go ahead and note here, this is where nutrients 
are absorbed. And so that's the significance. When we talk about calcitriol, calcitriol will stimulate the absorption <laughs> of calcium ions. So remember we've said you can eat as much calcium as you want, but if you don't have that vitamin D, if you don't have that calcitriol, you're not going to get it from your diet. Two hormones left. Let's look next at the parathyroid hormone. We have an abbreviation here, PTH. PTH is um, actually named for the gland that makes it. So parathyroid hormone is being produced by the parathyroid gland. And we can see here that it's targeting osteoclasts. So here we see it as targeting the exact opposite of the hormones we've mentioned up above. Parathyroid hormone will cause an increase in osteoclast proliferation, right, and activity. Remember, your osteoclasts are there to break down unneeded, damaged, or old bone. They're doing osteolysis. And so this is important because it triggers the release of calcium ion from the blood, from the bone, excuse me. It's also going to promote the reabsorption of calcium at the kidney. This means retain calcium, meaning instead of letting it leave the body with the urine, you're gonna keep it in the body. And it's also gonna stimulate synthesis of vitamin D, okay? All right, so we're gonna see that your calcitriol and your parathyroid hormone are going to actually be working together for a common goal. And we'll pick up on that a little bit more in the next video. The last one to mention is the calcitonin. Calcitonin is also being produced by the thyroid gland. And we see that calcitonin is also targeting osteoclasts. But here we see it's doing the opposite. It's going to inhibit osteoclast activity and stimulate calcium ion uptake by the bone. Okay, so a couple things here. So here I've put calcitriol and parathyroid hormone. They're going to work together. Okay. And then, excuse me. And then let's look at the parathyroid hormone. Okay, too much technical difficulty. Hopefully I got it sorted out here. So the parathyroid hormone and the calcitonin are gonna be doing opposites, opposite actions. They're going to be working against each other. So if you like that kind of phrasing better, parathyroid hormone and calcitonin are going to do work against each other, opposite actions. The other thing that I want to do here, I don't know how well that will show up. Let's try it. Let's highlight calcitriol, parathyroid hormone, and calcitonin. So these last three are all going to be subject for calcium regulation, calcium regulation, which is showing up in the next video. All right. That's it for now. One video left. As always, take care of yourselves and each other.